Hi, I'm, I'm Matt Williams. Uh, I'm a principal consultant at Mount Melbourne Business School, Mount Eliza Executive Education. Thanks very much for coming to hear us speak this afternoon. And this is my colleague, Alan Sullivan. So we're here today to talk to you about taking a fresh approach to online leadership development. What we do at Melbourne Business School, Mount Eliza Executive Education, or our kind of primary task or purpose, is to support leaders and managers to be the best at what they do. And for us, that doesn't just mean sort of great content, great knowledge provision. It also means very rigorous and robust learning processes. So we spend a lot of time and dedication and energy investing in thinking through what great learning process looks like. And uh, part of that is online. And that's what we're going to sort of focus on today. So learning processes that we work with include things like action learning, include things like coaching, include methods and instruments, and, and online technologies. And we think about these processes supporting participants when they're with us in workshops, but also when they're back at work. And uh, increasingly, the role of integrated learning is around embedding learning at work. So that's really what we're going to focus on today. So, one of the ways that we've been working for the last three years in further supporting our participants is with Thread. And Thread is a social learning platform. It's online. And Alan's going to talk a bit about that right now. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to see you this afternoon. Um, so, Thread's been going for three years and it's our social learning platform. And so, uh, we use this to support our participants to embed their learning um, at work and when they're away from us. So I just wanted to share some of the core capabilities that we've been using with Thread over the last three years, and then in a few minutes' time, we'll be going over um, where we're taking Thread in the future. So one of the uh, key learning elements of Thread is program learning. And so that's uh, provided on Thread through the uh, online learning guide, which is kind of like an online learning workbook. And so the learning guide supports participants uh, when they first engage with us, so before they attend a face-to-face -face program with us, during a program, and then after a program, um, many months maybe after it's finished. And the learning guide includes what you would expect in there, uh, videos, materials, webinars, and activities. Another level is organizational learning. And we do that through Thread with the organizational hub. And so the organizational hub gives our clients the ability to customize and tailor a thread to their own needs. And then at the last level, we've got social learning. And this makes up a large uh, majority of thread. Um, and it can be done in many ways. We have many tools within thread, whether it's having um, public conversations and learning from thought leadership content, um, or cohort level discussions, and um, private messaging features that we call a huddle in thread um, for ongoing learning and coaching conversations. We believe these tools um, aren't enough anymore. Um, and the world's changing and we're determined to explore and find deeper ways to embed participants' learning when they're at work. In many ways, we're not taking our cue from MOOCs. As I said earlier, what we're really interested in is how we deepen the experience for our participants so that they think more about how they're applying their learnings. So that leadership development doesn't just occur when they're with us, it occurs at every step of the way with them. And so, in order to do this, we've started to think, you know, if there is this amount of change occurring in the world, leadership needs to emerge from all levels of an organisation. So the other opportunity that we see with online is the opportunity to deepen our reach within organisations. But what we've decided to do in terms of trialling this and experimenting and evolving our own thinking is to start with senior executives. And the reason that we started with that particular group was because we, we decided that they're likely to have the most barriers in terms of accessing online. So we designed a prototype in collaboration with our Deputy Dean, current Deputy Dean or Dean of Executive Education, Professor Paul Dainty, and worked with him to think about what the enablers and barriers to online learning for leadership development might be. And we're going to share a little bit about that with you today. We're going to deal with levels three, four, and five. 
but the transition between them is particularly critical because what you're doing is you're stepping up to different levels of responsibility. There are three points I want to make in particular about this image. The first one is the bottom level. Now the bottom level, people assume, i.e. managing yourself, that they're fine there. And you may well be, but the problem is if you're not, if you haven't worked out how to manage your time or delegate effectively, if you are at the top and you don't do that, you will cause chaos down below. Because your actions have a much greater impact the more senior you are. So you need to get that sorted out. Or if you're coaching your staff, you need to make sure that they've got the basics right. The second point I want to make is that you may say to me, Paul, well, I don't have an issue in managing myself or the beast. Well, that's great. That's good. The problem is that you should not be complacent because as you step up to the next level, what you're going to find is different responsibilities, different pulls and pushes on your time, which create a different dynamic and mean that you have got to rethink and relearn some of the skills of managing the beast. And the third point I want to make is that don't just assume that you can step up to the next level and everything will be fine. The job gets more complex, more difficult as you go higher. So you've got to think before you go into the role, what does that look like? So trying to think about what the next level looks like is going to help you make the transition better. So, ensure that you've got the basics right, ensure that you're not complacent, and think about what the next level looks like. So we're thinking about um, three key uh, learning mechanisms here. So um, what we've done here with the video content. Now, video content's been around for ages. It's been used in online learning for a long time. But we're trying to take a little bit um, of inspiration from uh, the TV and film industry and think about um, you know, background, scenery, uh, storylines, trying to make it engaging and making sure the video content is not you know, an hour long but maybe six minutes so that someone can watch a video, they might be at work and get back to their work or they might be at home and they can go and have dinner with their family. And so what we've tried to do here is sequence the learning material so that the executive um, can have a seamless learning experience. Um, and so that it can be self-paced and continually engaging. They read the document, read through all the key points, they mark it as complete, and they move on to their next activity, which is watching a video. And then the third key learning mechanism would be the adult learning principles. So to the um, to your right here, we've got a journaling section, and users can just write their own notes here. And this, this note is attached to the activity um, and is online, accessible anywhere, anytime. And then we've also got um, the discussion feature here, which is a synchronous discussion feature. So um, participants can engage um, with their peers at any time about the activity. So we don't intend to just use these tools. Um, as a standalone um, online programs, we also intend to use them to support our face-to-face -face programs. Um, so for both open and customised, um, to get better traction for um, participant application of their learning and therefore support our clients um, and get better return on investment. So that's what we wanted to do today was to create some space to facilitate a bit of dialogue about this. Because this is brand new and we're in the process of thinking through how this might better support what we do um, and, uh, and encourage our participants to apply their learnings, I'm really keen on hearing your thoughts, your questions, your reflections. So uh, a couple of different ways. This is generally part of an integrated design. So the idea is that the online isn't separate from the face-to-face. -face. Now, if we're using an, a fully online program, what we'd be doing is, is encouraging the participants through a number of different mechanisms, such as action prompts, such as reflective mechanisms, such as coaching conversations online. So it wouldn't simply be content delivered. Equally, if we're working uh, to integrate this alongside a face-to-face -face experience, the online elements would be part of an entire journey over a period of time. That might be anywhere between three to six to nine months 
um, and be interspersed in order to, to support how am I, you know, trialling these new ways of doing or new ways of being that I'm learning about back, in, back at work. So, two things. One is us actually prompting, um, and that might be through particular points in time where they're accountable to do a piece of work, to um, share something to the group, to share something back to the facilitator. It might be prompted by facilitated questions, and we have mechanisms within the technology to increase engagement in terms of self-motivation. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. We'll be, Alan and I will be at this stand, Melbourne Business School Manalyzer stand, just down here on the right. Um, if you want to have a closer look at the technology and how we've created it, we've got some iPads down there. We'd love to see you, talk to you a bit closely, more closely. Otherwise, thank you very much.